everyone. I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I've been working on a new pattern and I think I've got all the bugs worked out. I'm calling this the Hexagon Kaleidoscope. And believe it or not, it's made from just one fabric. Now that's possible because we're going to stack up layers of that one fabric. And we're going to get all these different blocks from cutting through the layers. So each block is made from the same little section of fabric stacked up and repeated. And that's what gives you that beautiful kaleidoscope effect. Now this quilt looks really good in a lot of different kinds of fabrics. But one thing you want to keep in mind is you need some color change. It doesn't work well if you have a print that's basically one or two colors and it's a small scale. That one won't look good because no matter where we cut the triangles, they're all going to look almost the same. Same thing here. Pretty print won't make a good um, hexagon kaleidoscope. Now this one's pretty good. We've got different colors and we've got these borders around the paisleys. That would make interesting motifs. I like this one a lot because some of the triangles are going to be all blue, some are going to be all peach, some are going to be green. But what I'm going to do today, I'm going to demonstrate on this poinsettia fabric. It's got some that'll be red, some triangles will have that uh, pine cone, some will have leaves, and this should make a really nice quilt. So we're going to need four yards of whatever fabric you're using. And since this is my pattern, it's a free one. And if you're going to be making this, I would recommend watching the video and getting the pattern because it'll be a lot easier for you to make it if you can see everything written as well as me demonstrating. Now, it's important to get your four yards in one continuous piece. You don't want four one yard cuts. You need a big long piece. And that's because we need to cut 24 inch pieces so we can layer it up. Most modern quilting fabrics are made so that one whole section of the print repeats itself every 24 inches. There's a few that'll repeat after 12, but that's okay. You can still use a 24 inch piece to layer up. You'll just have more of the same items on each part. So this section, we've got 24 inches. If I go over another 24 inches, this is exactly the same flowers in every position as what we've got over here. And that's important because we're going to cut these repeats and then stack them up. And that's going to help us make our quilt. Now, here's an easy way to find your repeats. On the edge of all printed fabric, there's going to be some lettering here. It might say the fabric company, the pattern number, and then it's got some individual colors here. These are all the colors that are in the print. So all you really need to do is get the very beginning of your fabric, your first cut here, and line it up right on top so that it matches. It doesn't matter where it started. You just want to get it completely lined up. And then so right here is where we're going to make our cut. Now, if you want, before you cut, you can put a little pencil mark there. But this part here is exactly 24 inches. So I can use this and go all the way down the four yards and mark all of the repeats before I cut them. So here's all six of the repeats. And you can already start to see all of the poinsettias lined up there. The first step now is to iron each fabric. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to smooth it out and steam press it nice and flat. That will really help when we go to cut it. Now all six layers are ironed and I've got them stacked back up here on the table and I've lined up the selvages. They're not perfect, but they're all pretty straight here. It's, it's okay if they're not perfect because we're going to be cutting off the selvages later anyway. Now, my fabric is 44 inches wide, and it's going to be really a lot easier for me to work with just half that amount at a time rather than this whole big piece. So since it's 44 inches wide, I'm going to cut it in half right here. 
at 40 at 22 inches so let me measure over now since I have six layers of fabric it's gonna be a lot easier to cut them if you put a weight on the end here I have a little five pound dumbbell and that really helps hold my ruler in place okay now we're going to just set this whole half aside and we're going to turn this half around and we're going to work on stacking these all up so that the layers are all exactly one on top of another. Now we're ready to get our patterns lined up really really close. They're kind of lined up now you can see that but we can get this really close. Now the easiest way to do this is to pick something in the pattern that you can see easily like the point of that poinsettia and I'm going to stick a pin right through the point just in the top layer. Now I'm going to get the next layer and I'm going to stick the pin through the same point. And I'm going to do that for all six layers. And it's pretty easy because they're so close already. And I'm going to just get the fabrics. I'm just going to kind of wiggle it around that pin there so that they're nice and flat. And then I'm going to pin it together like that. So now we're going to go from this corner all the way to the far corner here. And again, I'm going to find something that I can see easily, like that poinsettia point. And I'm going to take my pin again, and I'm going to poke it right through the tip of that. Then I'm going to take the next layer and do the same thing. So keep poking this through the exact same spot in all six layers. And what's going to happen is this is going to help us get everything lined up so that the layers, the part of the pattern, that part of this flower is going to be in the same spot every time. So now I'm just pressing these all together right around the pin so it's nice and flat. And then I'm just going to pin all the layers together. So now the pin took a little bite back there and it's holding everything together. I'm going to continue the same procedure in this corner here. So now I'm going to go right at the top of that leaf. The last corner. Now that all the corners are done, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in the middle of each of these long sides. Now I have eight pins in here, the corners, the middle of the sides, and I'm going to give it a little shake. So I'm going to grab where the pins are, I've got two pins, and I'm kind of giving it a little earthquake. I'm pulling it this way and giving it a little shake. And I'm going to the next pins, same thing, same thing here, and then we're going to pull it this way. Again, just hold the pins and kind of give it a shake. If you've got a partner who sews with you, you can have them hold pins on the far end as you hold these in shape. But really, just doing this, it lines everything up and our patterns are gonna be really, really close. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be really, really close. When you're done shaking it out, you wanna take out all those pins that you just put in because it's all nice and flat and we're ready to cut, but we don't want to hit the pins. So if you've got eight pins in here, count them as you take them out so you know you're taking out all eight. So we're going to cut this into four inch strips that are parallel to the selvages, the same direction as the selvages. But it's hard for me to cut in this direction accurately, so the easiest thing to do is to turn the cutting board. Then I'm just going to cut a little teeny bit off here. Now the weight really helps hold your ruler down because we've got six layers here. So it is important to use a nice sharp blade because if the blade isn't nice and sharp, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting through all six layers. So if you haven't changed your blade in a while, now would be a good time to do that. Now, what 
what I have is four inch strips here and I've got five of them. And I'm gonna take the cutting board and I'm gonna turn it back around. And I'm just going to work with one strip at a time. So I'm just gonna carefully slide this down here. Now for the next part, we need a template. We need a triangle template. This is a 60 degree triangle. So every angle on here is 60 degrees. It's pointed on every end. Some of them come with the tip cut off. You don't want that. You want one that's pointed on every end. This is the clear view brand, but you can get any, any 60 degree triangle. We want to cut four inch triangles out of here. So that's this big line right here. It's gonna go on the bottom and we can slide it over some. And I'm gonna hold it down tight and make two cuts. One there, slide the strip out of the way. And one there. Now we're going to turn the template over, put that four inch line up on top there and make a fresh cut. Continue flipping your template around and cutting triangles till you've used up the whole strip. I was able to get eight of the triangle sets from that row. Now we're ready to see what the blocks look like. So we're gonna take one of these stacks. This is six triangles that are all exact and we're just going to spin them around and line them up and look at what a nice pattern that makes. We've got those roses going around in a circle and the berries all in the middle. But there are options with the block. If we don't want the berries in the middle, say we want this gold part in the middle, I can turn each triangle so that that gold is in the middle and the block is going to look different. So it's really fun to get your triangles and spin them around and see which layout you like the best. So we're starting to get an idea of how different the blocks are gonna look. They all match they all coordinate. Some are more red, some are more green. And it is fun to play around with which point is gonna go in the middle. But honestly, they're gonna look good no matter which one you do. So don't worry about that too much. I can't wait to start sewing them. Once your cutting is all done, it's time to head straight to the sewing machine. We're going to work with one of these stacks at a time. So I'm going to fan it around just like I showed you earlier. So that's what's going to that's what it's going to look like. And I'm going to sew it one half at a time. So let's move that half up and work with these three. So I'm going to slide them over and put this one aside for now and put these two right sides together. Now they're exactly the same size, so it's really easy to sew these two together. So just a quarter inch seam allowance here. And I'm going to open this up and keep my seam allowance to the right, and I'm just going to finger press that right along the seam there. Now this one, Make sure it's in the right spot, same, same part of the center in the center, and put this on top of that one. So these are right sides together now, and we're gonna sew a quarter inch from the edge. So these two points here will line up. And if I was to draw a pencil line right along here, the quarter inch would go right where those two meet. So I'm gonna just slide this under here Stitch it up and now we'll open this one and again the seam allowance is going to go the same direction and I'm going to finger press it. So now we've got one whole half done. All we have to do is make a second half exactly the same way. So the easiest way for me to do that is to spin it around so that it looks just like this 
and then use the same procedure to sew it. There, that's the second half. So it looks just the same as the first half and that would make one complete block. But don't sew them together. Keep them together, but just set them aside like this. When those are all stitched up, you can see I've got them stacked up here in twos. Take them to your ironing board and even though we finger press them, we're still going to want to iron them. Iron both halves. And then we've got some little dog ears here. We've got, I think, four or five. So we're going to trim off that one. And we're just going to fold that over and trim off that one. And then there's two on the outside here. And it may seem like an extra step, but cutting these now will make your quilt a lot less bulky. Now, once you've got both halves done, you want to put them together and overlap them just a little bit. And then take a pin. I find one will work, but you can do two if you want. You just want to pin these halves together so they will stay, stay together in pairs, but I can see what it looks like too. I've got all of my blocks stitched up and all of the halves are pinned together. And now the fun part, ready to lay out the quilt. So let's grab a couple of these squares and we'll start in this corner here. So I'm keeping the opening where it's pinned together. I'm gonna to keep them all facing this way, not turned, all facing that way. So my first row, these are gonna go right next to each other, again, with the opening going that way. So there's the start of the first row. Now, it's very jiggity-jaggity on the edge here, but that's okay because the next row, the blocks are facing the same way, but look, that's going to fit right in there. And then the next block, it's going to fit right in here. And don't worry right now about how we're gonna get these all stitched together. We'll do that after we get the whole quilt laid out, but it's a lot easier than it looks. Now, you can keep laying out your blocks at random like this, or what I like to do sometimes is I've got kind of a dark color red here. I'm going to make a diagonal line here of the mostly red blocks. So I'm just going to keep going up like this. You might want to put all of your dark blocks in the middle of the quilt. So you can start laying out the middle of your quilt and then add blocks all the way around. There's no rules. You can just pick the blocks you like the best and you can put those near the middle of the quilt. So now you can see that I've got some lighter ones here on this diagonal. I might even switch this one out and put a light guy over here. And I'm gonna keep laying out light there, dark there, then I'm gonna come back with some more lighter ones. And this is just making the pattern interesting for me. I like to do kind of diagonal lines. So now you can see kind of a light diagonal, a darker diagonal, and again, you don't have to do yours in diagonals. You can do whatever you want. I just like to see that color change as it goes up the quilt. I've got all the blocks laid out and I'm pretty happy with the color balance. I didn't trade around too much because I don't like to go too crazy with it, but we've got some swaths of color but the individual blocks are still showing well. The last thing we need to do is we've got these empty spots here. So with our squares that are left over, all we're going to do is take that pin out and put half a block in these sections here. So you can look and see which block do I want where. And then we're going to do the same thing on the far side. And the blocks don't have to match up. So you can use this half here and this half all the way over there. Just fill in all these spots so we've got a nice straight edge going all along here. Now we're ready to sew all of our blocks together. And even though we made them in these separate hexagon shapes, we're going to be able to sew them in straight rows. Now here's how we do it. We're going to take out the pins 
that put the half blocks together. And when we do that, we're gonna end up with a separate row all along here. So you can see the first two rows here. All we have to do is make this row, make the next row, make all the rows, and sew them together. That's how we make the whole quilt. Now, I don't have a real easy way of just picking these up in a stack and making sure they stay in the right order. So I'm actually going to pin the whole row together. I'm just gonna stick a pin. I'm not gonna put them right sides together. I'm just gonna put a pin in here and pin the whole row and then take it to the sewing machine. So sewing the blocks together or the pieces together, the wedges, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is put these right sides together And so you're not making you're not making the tip match there. You've got to slide it up just a little bit so that when you're a quarter inch away from here, it will hit right in that divot there and then sew it together. So here's what it's going to look like after you get it sewn. It's going to make a long row like this. So I'm going to just finger press this seam to the right. Now let me show you on the next one. It's the same thing. We've got these two here and they've got to go right sides together. So just flip it over so they're right sides together. And then you want to get this slid. You have to figure out where you need it here. So you want it so that when you're a quarter inch away from the edge, that's a quarter inch away from the edge. And you can tell when you move it over to your machine, if you've got your quarter inch marked there, your needle will hit right where those two pieces came together. So that's where I'm sewing, is right where those two pieces come together. And it does the same thing on the far end. See how the sewing comes out right where those come together? And again, when you open this up and finger press it with the seam going to the right, you can see right here where our piece is. When we get ready to sew our rows together, that point there is a quarter inch in from the edge. Same thing down here at the bottom. I do like to iron each row as I sew it. So I'm gonna go from the back side here. You wanna be a little bit careful because it's not all in the straight grain. Some of it is on the bias. It depends which way you turned each individual uh, block when you were making it. But these seams are pretty easy to get flat. So I'm gonna iron it nice and flat all the way down. And there are a few dog ears here and I like to trim those off now because it makes the quilt a lot neater and less bulky. Now just put this row right back where it came from. And you can tell you don't have it turned upside down because it matches that half block there. And now I'm gonna pin the next row and stitch it together. But on this row, I'm going to stitch the seams and I'm going to finger press the seam to the left because the first row had the seams to the right. So if we press these seams to the left, it's going to make it easy to get our rows together without a lot of bulk. So go to the left this time. Here's the second row. It's all stitched together. It's all ironed nice and flat. And now we can stitch these first two rows together. So I'm gonna set them right sides together and take them right over to the machine. It's really pretty easy to get our intersections matched here because these seam allowances are going that way, but on the bottom, they're going the opposite way. And so what happens is they nest together here. So our points are gonna line up easily because we can feel that they're nesting. So I'm gonna line up my edges here, the points meet. And I'm just gonna stitch all the way down here. And every time you come to one of these intersections, 
the seam allowances are going in opposite directions because what we want when we open this up is for everything to meet up just like it is there. Here are those first two rows sewn together. And again, you can make sure you've got it back in the right spot because you can see you've got whole kaleidoscopes here. So the easiest way to make the quilt is to keep sewing it in two rows at a time. And then once you have all of those twos together, then you can sew this one to the next set. And you can keep going till the whole quilt is done. I've got all of the patchwork stitched together now. And you'll notice these two sides are straight, but the top and bottom are not. They're jiggy jaggy here. So we're gonna fix that up so we can put some borders on it. I'm just going to slide my cutting board right underneath this edge here. Then I can use my clear plastic ruler and line it up right on the shortest part here. And we can cut off this excess. And I'll have to move it a couple times to get the whole thing done. But then we'll have a nice rectangle and then we can add some borders and get this onto the quilting machine. The borders are on and it's all loaded up onto the quilting machine. Next step is to pick a thread color. Any of these colors, these are all in the prints, these would all look good. And honestly, I could go with a dark color on here. So the red, it's not going to show at all in those dark areas. And there's so much print in all the light areas that we could use red there. Could also use this really dark green. Again, not going to show in the dark. It's going to show a little in the cream, but it's not going to take away from the pattern at all. Now there's gold, there's metallic gold accents in all the prints. So if we use this on the red, it'll show a little, show a little there. Uh, just a slight bit up there. I'm going to go with the gold. For the quilting pattern, I couldn't resist using a Christmas themed one. This is holly berries. It's got the leaves, it's got the little berries, and this will match really nice with our poinsettia prints that are in the quilt. I've got the whole quilt done, and I really couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Now that it's quilted, you can really see those diagonal lines that show the different color background in the blocks. The quilting doesn't really show anywhere. It just blends right in, which is perfect, because what I really wanted to see was these kaleidoscope blocks with all the different poinsettias and the different leafy things. Now on the back side, I used a different poinsettia print. It's just a monotone print. Again, can't see the quilting at all. But this turned out 58 by 72 inches. So it's a really nice throw size uh, quilt. And I think it looks really good with the light border. So the patchwork floats in there, then the red border. And I came back with that green binding, finished it off very nicely. Now I wanted to show you another option for making this quilt using several different fabrics. So this has three different prints in it. It's got the same print that I used in these blocks. Well, these three. Then it's got that very light poinsettia in it. And then it's got a red background poinsettia in it. So the fabrics all coordinate but that way you can get more distinct color lines if you like, and it gives you just a lot more options for making your pattern have bolder 
stripes in it. Now here's the three fabrics that are in this quilt over here. Red background, light background, and then the multicolored one. And this is the only fabric that's used in this quilt here. And I'd be interested to know which quilt you like better. Leave me a comment and tell me. I'm kind of favoring this one right now, but it could be because I just finished stitching it up and it always seems like my latest quilt is my favorite quilt. But let me know what you think. Now, I don't think I showed you which fabric this quilt came from, but it was made with this stripe. And that's why this quilt has so many sharp angles and blocks that look like stars. So every time you pick a different print, you'll get a different effect in your kaleidoscopes. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the hexagon kaleidoscope. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. This is called Cactus Wreath. This was a fun quilt to make with jelly roll strips and I did it all in Kona cotton, all colors called peacock, purples, aquas, blues. So we have a tutorial that shows you how to make it, but today you can win it. All you have to do is click the link below that says giveaway and you put in your name and your email address. And remember, we can send the quilt to the winner anywhere in the world, so good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.